Disney made me kind of upset. Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm your Grim Grinning host, Blake. There's nothing in this. I just wanted it for dramatic effect. But peep the Universal Studios mug. I like it. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, as you can see, I'm back at home. I got the full setup going. I do need some more light over here. That's what I feel. I'm gonna need to get some more uh, LED lights on this side. But I thought I'd, I thought I'd make it a little bit better. So you know those, the not not this not this lightsaber that you can see right here. Uh, but I got the two smaller ones. I got them like standing up on my desk. One, this one's blue, same color as that right there, and one's yellow. And I got the the X-wing kind of lit up. You know, some nice lighting. I got the lighting in the back. I forgot to turn on the Star Wars one. It's whatever. We'll, we're learning for next time. And then I've got the projector going. You know, you got Magic King. Got to have it. Stuff. It's gonna change probably. It keeps. It's like a little montage thing. This is a sort of a more chill video. Um, we're not at the parks, obviously, so we're not going through, not riding Thunder Mountain in the middle of a, you know, like what feels like a tropical, tropical storm. We're not running to get our next lightning lane, we're not out of breath in the middle of a line, not a lot of crowds and stuff like that. We're just, just chill. Now, before I get into why I'm a little upset at Disney, um, I do want to say I do miss the parks a lot. I, I, I want to go back. It, it hasn't even been a full week yet. I think this time last week, what did it be, Wednesday that I'm recording this? Um, this time last week, we were we were at Universal last Wednesday. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, what a lot of you guys don't know is we took an extra day. Um, we're supposed to drive back Thursday, but I bought extra tickets to go to back to Hollywood Studios, which is, like I said, me and Caroline's favorite park. Uh, we went back to Hollywood Studios on Thursday and drove back Friday instead. That wasn't the original plan. I didn't record anything other than like maybe a few TikToks um, that you guys may or may not see. By the way, go follow me on TikTok. I'm putting some exclusive stuff there. I'm not. Uh, I'm not just rehash. I mean, there are some like video YouTube video clips, but I'm also putting stuff up there that you guys can't see here, and I find it pretty interesting. So yeah, go check it out. It is at your grim grinning host. Not just Grim Grinning Host, your Grim Grinning Host, because that's me. I'm your Grim Grinning Host. I, I didn't want to record a lot while I was at Hollywood Studios the second time, um, because I kind of, I realized that I was recording so much while we were at the parks. Well, it's great and all. I'm glad that I got the content for you guys. I just wanted to, you know, enjoy a day with my girlfriend, you know, at the Disney parks, like old times before the YouTube channel even started. So I, I got us more tickets to Hollywood Studios. We went, we had a blast, it was so fun. It was good to kind of just feel it, you know, instead of worrying about getting the camera angles and stuff. Now there were some stuff that I wish I could have filmed, like um, we got, we went on Millennium Falcon, only people in there. The, I'm dead serious, we got pilots, both me and Carolyn, we were the only people in the ship. Only ones, it was awesome. Um, we got to meet Max and Goofy. I tried to record that for you guys, actually. I did try to record that. It didn't turn out so well because I was kind of, I wasn't in full YouTube mode. So like a lot of the video was like not aimed at anything. Um, so I didn't get to record that for you guys. But another thing that I wanted to record for you guys, but I just was like, nope, nope. I promised myself, I promised Caroline. It's just us. It's just for our enjoyment. We got front row seats to Fantastic. It was so much better than what you guys saw. Oh my gosh. And just that, that show. I just love that show. But speaking of Hollywood Studios, that kind of has some sort of relation to why I'm a little upset at Disney. One of the big reasons why I started this YouTube channel and wanted to base it around, you know, Disney and Universal and stuff is because of one specific character interaction. I post him all the time. If you watch my TikToks, I got a bunch of TikToks on there with him. Um, I have so many videos in my phone that I haven't shared publicly. And that's every time I go in, I meet Lieutenant Agnon. Okay. Now, I don't want to ruin the magic for anybody. So if you don't want the Disney magic to be ruined, um, I would say leave the video, but I've got more stuff than just this. So 
just mute it and I'll give you like a thumbs up. But the reason I bring up Lieutenant Agnon is because my favorite cast member for Lieutenant Agnon, and for anybody who is a fan of Lieutenant Agnon, knows this cast member as him, uh, Preston Ellis. He's not the only Lieutenant Agnon. While we were there, we, we if you again watch my TikToks, we saw another guy. Um, I, I had his name and I completely forgot what it was. I'm sorry. Uh, he did good. But we saw two other uh, people playing Lieutenant Agnon. But the one that's always stuck out to me was Preston Ellis. But on Monday, Labor Day, I hop on Instagram. It's, it's at night. I'm about to go to bed. And I see that he had posted on Instagram and said that Disney decided not to renew his contract. That's why I'm upset. Now, a lot of people might just be like, why are you upset about that, Blake? It's not that big of a deal. Now, I feel like it is because that's one of my favorite things to do. Like I said, his character interaction is just the way that he talked to the crowd. It made my trip almost like it was like, like I was like, oh, my gosh, this is the I was like, this is the coolest character interaction I've ever had. And it's, it feels so personal. It's so funny. It really immerses you into the world of Batu and Galaxy's Edge, Black Spire Outpost, Star Wars as a whole. And I just think he did so well. The other guys, they did great. Don't get me wrong. The other guys, they did great. There was one guy, the last one that we saw, I didn't actually get to talk to him like I did the other, Preston and the other guy. Um, but he was... He was a little bit more menacing. Preston's like more funny, like jokey kind of, you know, style. The other guy that I'm talking about, he was he was more intimidating, more menacing. He still had like a few zingers here and there. Now I'm not saying that's the wrong way to play him. I feel like you take you take it and you do however you feel like you need to do for the character. Um, but I just preferred the more jokey, you know, version of Lieutenant Agnon. Now. The other guy that you guys see in my TikTok as well is um, he had a little bit more zing, but it, it, he felt like he was more, he was also a little bit more serious. Like he was a nice in between um, and he, he did great. But like I said, Lieutenant Agnon Preston Ellis was my first and I just, I just liked his rendition. And I feel like he's just, that's who he's known. That, that, when you think of Lieutenant Agnon, anybody who's a fan, anybody who's seen him on social media sees this guy. And that's almost a fact because I went on TikTok, searched up Lieutenant Agnon, that's it. And I saw, aside from the ones at Disneyland, I saw him, 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 Preston, Preston, Preston. And I'm like, I just don't understand. And he told, he's posted in his Instagram. Now, I'm not... I'm not saying that what he is saying is true. I don't know why he would lie, but I also don't know him as a person, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take his word for it, but I'm not saying you guys should as well. And I'm not saying to take my word for it either. Because like I said, we don't know. But he said that they didn't give him a reason. Um, it it could be something, like it could, I, I don't even know. Like I, I really, I, I don't know. Because I feel like if they did give him a reason, he would say it. But then again, it could be like something bad that we don't know. And he doesn't want that to be out there. Who knows? I just don't understand. Like, I feel like he was the best. No offense to the other guys. I, but speaking objectively by the evidence that I see on every social media platform, he is the guy that everybody sees. So I just don't understand why out of everyone, it was him. And I'm not advocating for anybody you know, I don't want anybody to replace his position, like, in getting their contract, you know, I, I don't think it was terminated, but it wasn't renewed. I don't want one of the other guys to be in that boat and Preston to be, still have a job. <laughs> I want everybody to have a job, but I just feel like some sort of reason behind Disney doing it would, I don't know for him, but it would, at least it make me feel like, okay, well, they had some sort of reason. Other than that, you guys can find him on uh, Instagram. It's Preston Ellis. I think it's Preston Ellis One. Um, I'll, I'll put it right here. Um, go follow him if you guys liked his character. You know his style, the character's rendition of the character. Uh, and we wish you the best, everybody who's a fan of you, Preston. If you're watching, everybody who's a fan of you, we wish you the best. We hope that 
you find something that you're happy with, uh, maybe, and if this is something that you would want, maybe Disney might take you back after seeing how much everybody's like, what the heck, dude? Uh, but other than that, we wish you the best. We love you. We love, you know, you are our Lieutenant Agnon, and we'll stick beside you for whatever, whatever endeavors you have next, and we can't wait to see your adventure. Other sad Disney news, um, this moving on to Disney Springs side of the park, or the, the bubble. I didn't know that <laughs> Dreams That Soar, the drone show, was a limited thing. Now, maybe I'm just oblivious. Maybe I'm not too into, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not as much into the news as I should be, you know, being a park YouTuber, but I had no idea that it was a limited thing. If I did, I probably would, I probably would have, you know, I don't know, just taken in the watching the show in person a lot more. Um, I'm glad now that I recorded it because Dreams That Soar was a limited thing, and it ended, uh, today's the 4th, it ended Monday. I didn't know that. It ended the 2nd. Uh, so, I hope you guys got to see it in person. If not, you guys can go back to my channel and watch the, uh, for the Disney Springs video. And if the whole show's in there. Sorry, I tried to fix it, but I just don't have the charger on hand right now. But, so, the lighting's gonna be a little different. Yeah, if you guys want to go see that, it's on my YouTube channel. You can go see the Disney Springs vlog. I've recorded the whole thing so you guys can see it. It was a truly phenomenal experience, but it, 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 the, the video doesn't compare, honestly. So, that's gone. Sad. I hope they bring back some other drone show. I don't know why they wouldn't because I feel like drones are expensive. So, it'd be kind of, I mean, I know Disney is like a mega corporation that, you know, has tons of money, but I, I I still feel like I don't. It'd just be weird for them to invest in all these drones and then only use them for a limited time and never use them again. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had some sort of plan for like a new show, similar like how they do the fireworks, how they have new shows every now and then. Um, maybe they'll do something new with the drones. Who knows? But speaking of drones, I was going to cover Illuminous. I believe that's the name. Illuminous uh, in Universal. Uh, their drone show I didn't get the chance because they're they're it's not they're not doing it right now but they are reopening if, if I if my information is correct they are reopening back in new, November their drone show will be back open uh, I'm thinking maybe it's because Halloween Horror Nights for some reason I'm not too sure we'll see but yeah November Illuminous should be back open hopefully I'll get to get back around to watch go out there and watch it and cover it for you guys wrapping up the disney side of the news um this has been a more disney oriented video uh tron they are opening a standby line it will no longer be virtual queues it'll be a standby line they are opening it next week as of me recording this video on the 4th of september next week standby line you can just walk up it's gonna be skyrocketed <laughs> that the only ride that tops that in terms of launch to me which i feel like is the best part of roller coasters but to, to each their own if you don't like launches you know that's fine i really love launches have they been going the whole time the only ride that beats tron in terms of launches is rock and roller coaster that one's just insane like it just takes off my top three are definitely velocicoaster tron and rock and roller coaster standby line next week on tron you can just walk up no longer having to wake up super early to make sure you get that you know virtual queue to be honest though we gotta hope that 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 virtual queue goes soon that was a great ride you guys saw my reaction if you didn't go back and watch it it's on the magic kingdom uh video also on the magic kingdom video the epic Thunder Mountain video, which I rewatched it, and it just, you know, you're seeing everything that happened on Thunder Mountain, and then it's just cutting to us going into Pirates, and I just look like I've been through war. It's so funny to me. Now, I mentioned um, Halloween Horror Nights earlier when I was talking about Illuminous, and maybe that's how it, why it 
got impacted. I'm still not sure. Uh, but speaking about Halloween Horror Nights, like I've been telling you guys, it looks like the uh, first weekend of October is whenever I'm going. Um, you can't record in the houses. I think what I'm going to do is whenever I go, I'm not going to record like I did the Disney trip with Carolyn. I'm not going to have the tripod. I'm not going to have the mic there with me. I'm not going to be walking and talking to the camera. But I will record things. You can't record inside the houses. But I will record things that I see, like the scare zones, maybe some snacks that I get. Because I know I really want to get the the marshmallow. Not the marshmallow, the, the s'more uh, from Ghostbusters. So I'll like record stuff like that, my reactions and stuff like that. But it's going to be more along the lines of just a handheld camera you know kind of thrown together and then it'll be a video like this where i just recap my trip and throw in those videos and i'll rank the houses now as of right now based off of what i've seen insidious looks like it's going to be the scariest house ever i am only saying that because there is um somebody that i know to be not personally but i've seen on youtube videos and stuff to be really critical of things uh most things are either meh or not that good so you know that when he says that it was great it's it's pretty good but whenever i heard him say that insidious is the best house of probably all of howling horror nights that got me hyped up now one that i really want to do well that i haven't really heard much about is uh slaughter cinema that's one that I really want to do well. Um, I just, because I like movies, I just feel like the whole vibe of it, the drive-in is just seems so cool. And I like the reason why they do it because from what I've heard and from the past Halloween Horror Nights, they've used it before Slaughter Cinema. They use it as like different movies as you're walking through the different movies. Um, they use that as what people talk about the most about Slaughter Cinema, like which part let's say like they did like a killer santa claus in one part and in the next part you're you know do something with a monster and then the last part is like serial killer or something like that if i if a if a large amount of people like go through and like oh that santa claus part was so cool all oh, that santa claus part that could be a future house in you know for Halloween Horror Nights. Like, they'll take that, they'll be like, people really responded well to Slaughter Cinema, the part with the Santa Claus, so let's have that. So I just feel like that that's a cool, that's a cool idea. And one thing I'll say about Universal, Disney does great, and I'm not downing Disney in any way, but Disney has a very set way of doing things. Uh, now, I'm not saying they don't listen to crowd feedback, but I will say that I think Universal does it a little bit more. Um, so that's why I appreciate this because it's it feels interactive in a sense where if you really like something and it's a popular thing, they'll be like, that's what they want. So let's give it to them. So I feel like it's a good trade off. They give us something great. We give them our money. So as of right now, those are my top two insidious uh, Slaughter Cinema are the ones I really want to do well. I'm excited to see what Ghostbusters is like in Quiet Place. I still want to watch the Quiet Place movies. I haven't yet. But speaking of movies and speaking of like just the vibes of Halloween, uh, it's September. To me, September marks the beginning of spooky season. I love spooky season. And I know it's only the second episode of the ticket booth whenever it, you know, it gets made. But Originally, we had said we were going to watch Twisters, but it's spooky season, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go off and just punch it with a with a horror movie. I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna ease in. We're gonna start with something that I love. It makes sense because we were just at Universal, and it to me has spooky vibes. Now you may or may not agree with me, but it to me feels like it has spooky vibes. Me and Caroline are gonna watch. Uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. That's going to be the next Ticket Booth episode that we're going to do the whole Harry Potter franchise. We're not going to do it back to back. I'm going to riddle in some other movies in between. We're definitely going to get more Ticket Booth episodes out more frequently, but we're starting off the second episode with Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and then 
obviously I'll have some scary, scary movies in the ticket booth. And I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see who I can get on to come watch a movie with me and record a, no, record a podcast, have a conversation about it because I just love talking about movies. If you guys have any movie suggestions for spooky season, maybe some that I haven't watched, maybe some that I know somebody hasn't watched, but I have, just throw them in the comments. If you guys want to see a specific movie on the podcast, let me know. And if I can make it happen, I'll try to make it happen. That's all I have for today's In the News. This is going to be not like a very frequent thing, but occasionally I'll pop in here and give you the news that I know of. Just have a sit down chat, you know, kind of like a one-on-one -on -one situation. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, be on the lookout throughout this weekend. Uh, We're going to do the Ticket Booth episode for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So be on the lookout for that. Hopefully you guys enjoy the first one. Karate Kid was a great movie. I do want to watch the other ones. Maybe we'll do it for the ticket booth. Maybe not. Let me know if you guys want to see the Karate Kid movies. It'll probably be after spooky season. So I really hope you guys have like this style of video. Um, it won't be that frequent, but I wanted to get something out there for you guys. And I just thought that this was a great way to kind of come together. Oh, it changed again. <laughs> Wait, is that the... Oh, that's the best bathrooms in Magic Kingdom. Anyways, really hope you guys like this video. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share with your family, with your friends, and your loved ones. And who are we going to share with today? Speaking of cast members, if you know somebody who is a cast member at Disney, or even just a, whatever they call them at Universal, an employee at Universal, share this video with them. As always, I've been your Grim Grinning host, Blake. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video, which is probably going to be the ticket book. Thank you.